Hello, my name is Daniel Solov and I'm a professor of law. I specialize in information privacy law. In this video, I'll provide some guidance about how educational institutions should deal with cloud computing service providers. Increasingly, educational institutions are hiring outside companies to perform cloud computing functions related to managing personal information. The benefits of cloud computing are that cloud service providers might be more sophisticated at managing personal data. They may be able to manage data more inexpensively and effectively than the educational institution could do itself. In many cases, cloud service providers can provide better security than the educational institutions can. The risks of cloud computing are that educational institutions no longer have as much control over the personal data. One risk is that a cloud computing provider can outsource some functions anywhere in the world to countries that have little or no privacy protections. In one instance, a university medical center outsourced transcription of its medical records to a company in California, which then subcontracted with a person in Florida, who subcontracted with a person in Texas, who ultimately subcontracted with a person in Pakistan. The person in Pakistan wasn't paid by the person in Texas, so she wrote to the medical center and threatened that she would expose all the records unless the medical center got involved and made the Texas person pay. This example illustrates how easy it is to lose control over information when it is outsourced. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act, FERPA, unfortunately provides little guidance about the selection of cloud providers and the management of these relationships. FERPA merely requires one condition, that the party to whom the information is disclosed will not disclose the information to any other party without the prior consent of the parent or eligible student. There are many other important responsibilities for cloud service providers that FERPA ignores. Here is some guidance about how to select cloud service providers, how to establish a relationship with them, and how to manage that relationship. Prior to engaging in business with a cloud computing provider, an educational institution should conduct due diligence on the provider and make sure the provider has a good reputation and good privacy and security practices. Ask the cloud service provider for details about how it stores the data, how it protects the data, and where the data is stored. When selecting a cloud service provider, make sure that it has an adequate accountability architecture in place. That architecture consists of having data stewards who are responsible for the privacy and security of the data, doing routine assessments of risks, having a meaningful system of oversight and monitoring to ensure compliance, and having a training program for employees to minimize security lapses and mistakes. When contracting with a cloud computing provider, an educational institution should be sure that the contract has sufficient provisions to ensure that the data is protected. An educational institution should never just outsource it and forget about it. Even when the data is outsourced to others, the buck always stops with the educational institution, which remains the primary institution with responsibility over that data. A privacy or security incident at a cloud computing provider doesn't just tarnish the reputation of that provider. It also can injure the reputation of the institution that trusted the cloud computing provider, especially if the institution didn't do enough to ensure that the provider was taking adequate care of its data. What should contracts with cloud computing providers require? I recommend the following. The cloud computing provider should agree to maintain the confidentiality of the data. The cloud computing provider should have the appropriate technical, administrative, and physical security safeguards to protect the data. The provider should destroy all personal data that is no longer needed. If the relationship with the cloud computing provider is terminated, the provider should not retain any of the personal data. The cloud computing provider should abide by the educational institution's privacy policies. The provider should have appropriate training of its employees regarding following the educational institution's policies and safeguarding the security of the data. Policies are meaningless unless there is training to back them up. Many privacy and security incidents are caused not by technical issues, but by the human factor, the small errors people make out of carelessness or ignorance that can lead to big problems. If cloud computing providers desire to subcontract any of their functions to other cloud computing providers, they should be required to first seek the educational institution's prior approval. The educational institution should circumscribe the ways in which the cloud provider can use the data. Data should only be used for the purposes related to providing the cloud computing service. If the provider engages in uses for other purposes, these purposes should be clearly defined and limited. Educational institutions should be careful when authorizing other uses, as such uses could conflict with FERPA or other federal or state laws. Any such uses should be incorporated into the privacy policies of the educational institutions when they gather the data. 
data so that people are on notice about them. Educational institutions should ensure that they can impose appropriate sanctions upon the cloud computing providers if the providers fail to live up to their requirements to provide good privacy and security. Once the contract is underway, that isn't the end of the educational institution's responsibilities. The educational institution should engage in routine assessments about how cloud computing providers are performing in their duties to provide privacy and security safeguards. I hope you found this video to be informative. Thank you for your attention.